Good afternoon. Uh, today's class will be a bridge design exercise. The objective of this bridge design exercise is for you to understand a little bit about uh, how planners and particularly engineers go about actually designing uh, a bridge which is here taken as an example of any type of infrastructure. Last week we went through the design process uh, in detail uh, from, from the beginning and we covered many aspects of it. Today you will focus on uh, only certain aspects but you will be actually doing more or less what the engineer does using a particular software tool which simulates the process of calculation and uh, thought process of an engineer. So to state the objective again we want to understand the process of infrastructure design by designing a truss bridge using the West Point designer tool. A truss bridge is a particular type of bridge and we will discuss more about the truss bridge when we talk about the tool. The West Point bridge designer is a tool developed by the US Military Academy and which is widely used uh, in a bridge design contest at high school level every year in the United States. This tool simulates the design and testing of a truss bridge and it has a particularly nice graphic uh, interface through which you can see how the bridge reacts to a particular load and also whether or not the bridge fails, fails meaning whether it breaks. The components used in the bridge and the loads used and the calculations are all realistic means meaning that these are actually what engineers would use. They would use these particular kinds of components and these are the standard loads that are recommended in order to design bridges and the calculations are also correct engineering calculations. The costs given are also realistic at least for the United States. Now what is a truss bridge? We will see some examples of it in a little while and also we will discuss in great detail the components of a truss bridge when we look at the software. A truss bridge is composed of a lattice of linear elements which means that it's a little bit like a spider web and as we'll see some examples and the most important thing about our truss bridges is that they have pin joints. They are connected together in a way in which they can actually rotate about each other. When you have a pin joint then the element is only subject to tension and compression. Tension means it's pulled along its length and compression means it's pushed together along its length. There is no bending which is a complicated kind of force on an element and uh, then it makes both the calculation and the design of the element difficult. So when you have a truss bridge with pin joints it's easy to analyze. That is something that's important and it's easy to write a simple software and if you look at the help files in the tool you will see some uh, a lot more explanation of what a truss bridge is. We will just take some recent examples in Sri Lanka. If you look at these pictures you will know that many old bridges are also uh, truss bridges. Uh, the other kind of bridge we have in Sri Lanka which I am not showing a picture of is a beam bridge which is just a concrete element laid from end to end on which the road runs. Uh, but we are going to look at truss bridges in particular this bridge. This is the Irakamam bridge. Uh, on the road between Tringamali and Pulmune. It was uh, constructed as part of post tsunami reconstruction and you can see here if you look at the mouse this is composed of several truss elements and the first element goes from the end of the bridge which is the land side of the bridge is called the abutment and then it goes to an element that is standing in the water here that's a pier. So there is a truss for each of these spans. This bridge has five spans and each of them has a truss. But each truss is independent so you have to analyze only one portion of the bridge at a time. Of course is it easier to make them of equal lengths then you have to analyze only one truss and make it five times. So you can see here this is the first span, the second span, the third span and so forth. And these trusses are pretty large. Each of them is about 48 meters in length which means this whole bridge is 240 meters which makes it one of the longer bridges that you will see in Sri Lanka. This is another view of the truss bridge. 
showing, showing the view through all five spans. And you can see now the road has been constructed on top of the bridge. So when you go on the bridge, you don't know that below you there are also truss elements. This is the bridge during its construction stage. Here you can see the joints. Now the pieces are bolted together to this one plate. And even though there are several bolts, they are free to rotate. That is, this is a pin joint still. So this element can change its angle slightly when some weight goes over the bridge. You will see in the program also how the joints will change their angle slightly. So this is an example of a pin joint. Here is another joint where four elements are coming together. And finally, how do you launch this bridge or how do you, you make these trusses on the land side, on both sides or on one side and then you have to put them on the piers. You can either do that by using cranes or in this case, they have used this rolling launch method where they have an extra section on both sides and they slowly push this out from one end until it reaches the pier on the other end. And then they keep going and then they rem later on remove this extra section and when this part of the truss is resting on the pier. So uh, this is how they have launched all five piers one at a time. First you launch it to one pier and then you carry on to the next pier. And I think they have used the old bridge uh, as, as, as help to do this. After they constructed this new bridge, of course, they have demolished the old bridge. Okay, that is all for now. And now we will uh, get to looking at the software and what you have to do for your exercise today.